Okay, and as I continue to extend out, one other thing that I just kind of noticed here concerning the cursor behavior, right now I have it in the PPI mode, and right now I am just simply moving my cursor left and right, and see how the cursor just sort of moves not directly left and right, it just sort of follows the arc. That is the normal behavior, so moving the cursor up and down moves it up and down the azimuth line. If I put it into the B scan or the B scope scan mode, now if I move my cursor left, right, up and down, it moves physically on the screen, left, right, up and down. I guess that uh, seemed pretty natural to me, but I guess that could be a little bit confusing. I just thought I would show that now that it was on my mind, but yeah, anyway, I am yeah, out here a little bit past Creech, so yeah, let me go ahead and bring it on back around. I was reading up on Super 530 employment. I think that's what I'm going to hit next is once I get a good super single target track is to employ some radar guided missiles here real quick. So let me come back around and pick these guys up. So let me bump it back out to 40 miles scan and my cursor is just sort of going to hang out there in the middle. Okay, so they should be yeah, a few more degrees to go. And I should start to pick up contacts. They should be co altitude, so this should work out just fine. I'm in the 60 and 4 bar scan mode, and yeah, there they are just as advertised. And let me go ahead and level out here, and I'll try to pay a little bit more attention to how my aircraft is actually flying. And I, I don't necessarily have to zoom in like I do, I just do that to make it a little bit more presentable here. I, I think ideally, you know, if I were just doing this flying a mission and weren't worried about presentation, I would just do it from like here, but. Uh, I will zoom in just to make this a little bit more apparent what I'm actually doing and what I'm seeing. Okay, so let me slew on over and lock up one of these contacts. So, okay, one command of the one lock command to go to track wall scan. So let me check out the information. Now in track wall scan mode, it's going to track that one target and then it's going to continue to scan in the area around that and update the position of the other contacts. So, very useful. And the symbology that we get. Now we have stuff up at the top and my understanding is that we have the aircraft heading right up here so it's heading 076 and that is updating 071 so he is in a well left hand turn right there and we have the closure rate which is 180 knots or so and then I have the target altitude which is 15,972 feet. 16,000 is exactly where I put them so yep that sounds exactly right and then the rest is yeah, exactly as we saw before. Okay, so it was one depression of the lock command, and it's actually this button right here on the stick that I have mapped. It goes to track wall scan. Another depression goes to single target track. Let me try that one more time. Maybe the cursor has to be a little bit closer than I thought it did. Okay, so once to track wall scan, again to single target track, and now it is disregarding all the other targets, and it's just going to track an update that one contact that I can see is in a left hand turn and let me see minus minus 36 minus 37 minus 38 I have not run across what that's supposed to be telling me maybe that's aspect angle so yeah like I'm heading this direction he's heading in that direction that could be like relative aspect angle I think that's exactly where it, what it is so he's coming around well yeah, that, yeah, that's exactly right. 45 degrees, that's exactly what that was. Relative aspect angle as I have lost him in my scan extent. Okay, let me bump it down to 20. Lock him up again. Okay, once track will scan, twice a single target track. Okay, got it. So same symbology, just with the addition of the aspect angle. And there he is right there, out there in the distance in my HUD. Okay, under my HUD I have distance right there backed up 7.4 miles coming down and once I select my Super 530 missile I think I'm going to get some more stuff so I go master arm to R okay now I'm in the air to air mode it takes it out of whenever you go master arm to arm it takes it out of what are, the nav mode and puts it into either air to air or air to ground based on the weapon that you have selected now let me select Super 530 now I'm in the Super 530 mode, and there we go. Then I have some more information backed up right here that's going to give me some min and max ranges, and I think I saw there a sort of like an optimum range backed up there as well, as I'm going to need to back off and set up on this one again. But I think I've got a pretty good handle now on the radar display and how that's going to work, and at this point, yeah, I'm going to back off, set up on that again, 
and see if I can employ some missiles and get some more information on that. So I will be right back. Okay, so I'm back having extended out a pretty good distance this time. I've been reading through the weapons management section of the manual and everything is going to be controlled through two panels. We have the PCA right here and this is going to be used for weapons mode selection, master arms, selective jettison, and weapons type selection. And then I have the... it has another name. Let me go to the manual and see what the proper name for it is. PP... PPA? Let me see. Yeah, PPA, and this is going to be used to uh, select different options for fuse arming, ripple quantity, and ripple spacing. Uh, some different odds and ends right there, but we'll get to that here in just a second, because for now we're just going to employ the Super 530 missile. Okay, let me get myself oriented again here. Okay, I've got Indian Springs Creech. That would mean the targets are right out here. Actually, right out there, there's Dogbone Lake. So I'll keep coming around and get set up on this. So... Essentially, what I'm interested in here is the S Super 530. So what I'm going to do is go master arm to arm. I'm going to select the Super 530 missile. And again, just like before, it takes it out of nav mode and puts it into air to air mode. And I can see that on the HUD, I have G with the circle. That means that the missile that I'm going to be firing and dealing with is the one on the left side. And at this point, I believe, unless I'm completely missing anything, it's as easy as locking a target in single target track mode, making sure I'm in range and firing the missile. Now, I'm going to have some different uh, HOTAS settings and HOTAS commands that's going to sort of put me into a quick Super 530 mode. Let me, let me pause real quick, I'll map that, and I'll be right back. Okay, so the one that I was thinking about was the Magic 2 Select. It's like a quick sort of like a dogfight switch, in fact, in the F-16 that's going to bring up the Magic 2 infrared guided missiles. I was thinking that was for Super 530 for some reason, but I've got it mapped provisionally to a location on my stick, and it's raining outside. It sounds a little bit weird on the, the replay here as we go, but okay, now, coming back down here, yeah, that's that's all squared away as far as HOTAS functions, as far as I can tell right now, and I'll, I'll clean this up a little bit if I uh, need to at a later date if we get some more functionality or something completely changes, but yeah, let me come down to my radar, I'll bump it out to a 40 mile scan, and I'll come in and lock up my first target. So track while scan, now I'm in single target track, I can tell it is coming towards me, heading from my left to right, and there we go, I've got him. Now I need to wait until I'm going to take it that this is the max range, the sort of uh, bold line is max range, the longer uh, solid line is optimum, and the bottom line is minimum range, so... Let's see, I'm at 31 miles now. That would mean that, geez, that's like 10 miles. So we're not going to get, apparently, that much range out of these. I'm not sure exactly what the quoted uh, sort of by the book range is. I mean, everything is going to vary with altitude, airspeed that you launch from. There's a whole variety of factors, but yeah, I'm going to take it as is. And boy, I seem to be losing luck uh, more than, well, not, I don't know what normal is, so I won't say more than... I would have expected. So let me go back to single target track and I'll sort of keep my aircraft pointed at them. It's also possible that these guys are jamming me or dropping chaff and that's why I was dropping luck right there. But from what I can tell, okay, this is a good setup for a Super 530 shot. Now, I was mentioning the different modes that we have available up here on the, what are you called again, PCA on the top row. Now with the Super 530 selected, now I'm going to have RDO, POL, and TAF. Now RDO, let's go to that one first. Okay, that's nav master mode. Okay, there we go. So yeah, whatever that says, target pursuit mode. Okay, so RDO, I can see that I have this selected. That means that I'm in single target track, just like I'm in right now, so that's exactly what I would expect. POL, police mode, if I go to that mode, it's going to inhibit the weapons release and just be used for target, track, and identification. So I'm going to make sure that mode is disabled since I want to fire. And TAF, not known at this time and not available. Yep, okay, fair enough. So it's going to work just fine without that functionality in either case. Now what happens if I depress this? I believe I will lose single target track. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. So I depress that, I lose the single target track. Let me go ahead and reacquire. Just let me verify that. Yeah, that's exactly what that is. So if I depress it, I lose the single target track. I could also do the same thing by 
uh, just re-depressing the target lock button on my stick, and that has the same function. It just drops the track and goes back to the range wall scan or a range wall search, or just the basic search mode of the radar, whatever it's actually called. Okay, I'll make this my target for the first shot. I I can't see anything else that I have to do here. I don't think I'm missing anything, and if there's more to it or more to the story than what I'm picking up here, I'll, after the fact, go in and add some stuff to it later. Okay, so 12 miles range. It looks like it's about 8 miles, if I had to guess, on the max range on the indicator. So I'm going to wait until I'm at that point to get a lock. Okay, so... Relative bearing, 164, closure speed, Mach 1.3, which makes sense because I'm heading at him, he's heading at me. This should be actually a pretty a pretty good aspect or angle to take the shot. He's starting to head off to the right a little bit. Okay, 6.7. I'll wait until I'm about 5.5 to take the shot. Okay, there we go. Missiles in the air. Now let's say... Okay, that is guiding. And it's not a fire and forget weapon. Did I just break luck? I think he just chaffed me, is what happened. I was tracking, and that's, yeah, that's that broke luck. And I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure that was just chaff. Let me pick something else. Okay, let me go single target track on this guy. Okay, this is something different, isn't it? That's my tanker. I feel bad about shooting down my tanker, but yeah, I'll try this just to make this work. Okay, so missile away. Okay, that's tracking. Got a good luck, and I need to maintain luck. It's a semi-active... Radar guided missile. Yeah, that's a good track he's got going. Going right on in on it. There we go. Good hit. So I guess I won't be refueling on this sortie, although it was the wrong type of tanker to begin with. This, uh, of course, doesn't use the like the U.S. probe and drogue. I have to have a tanker configured with a drogue, and then I have the probe on the aircraft. But that is, I believe, all there is to Super 530 missile employment. Somehow, I think there's more to it. And if I find something else, I'll include that later, but yeah, I'm satisfied with that. I could, I can make that work, and I'll have to go back. I'm almost positive it was just that uh, the aircraft evaded or was kicking out chaff, and that's why I happened to break lock, but I'll confirm that. So for now, it's time to get into some different radar modes. So that was just the basic range wall scan. Is it range wall scan or is it range by search? That I'm thinking about there. RWS. Yeah, range wall search, according to this mangle. And that's the thing about acronyms. You know, different mangles or different companies or different branches of the service have different names for different acronyms. So there's no right or wrong way to pronounce an acronym or to, you know, different things like CCIP, depending on the mangle. In fact, you read even just for the A10 has a different uh, definition and a different way of expressing it. But okay, we'll go with that. Now, in addition to that mode, I have some special mode so close combat mode and i believe this is going to be entered by using that hotas command that i mapped that magic 2 select hotas command that i uh, put on there so that brings up the magic 2 did that do anything i don't think that did anything special to the radar though so i'll tell you what i'm going to have to read up on this a little bit more and it's probably been about 20 minutes on this video i need a break so I've been actually going at this for longer than 20 minutes, I just cut out the rest of it. So I'm going to come back in the next video and look at some of the special radar modes. So thanks again, and I'll see you next time.